Greetings. It is I, the Great One Himself. Anarchy Moment, coming at you. So today, I was working, because you motherfuckers won't send me enough bitcoins for me to go into retirement, live in some third world country with underage prostitutes servicing my every need. By the way, it's CYNLIBSOC.com on the internet. Today I was working, and while we had a little downtime, I did what I always do when I want to get my blood pressure up. I went on Facebook, and I saw stupid things. You know, what did we ever do before Facebook? What did we ever do to get an exposure to sheer fucking stupidity and ignorance? Oh, that's right. We watched the network news. All right, so the first thing I saw being discussed by some of my idiot friends on Facebook was how, and just, if you're a feminist statist, just get offended now, because this entire anarchy moment, for the most part, is going to be about making fun of women. Imagine that. All right, I'm feeling a little, I'm, I'm a little down, because I just ate, and it's hot, and I got a lot of shit to do. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I am going to go trail running with the new running shoes that I just got. They've only been out on the trail one time so far, but they're really cushy. I might regret going for a longer distance trail run in the new running shoes, but nobody ever said I was really very bright about stuff like that because I want to go trail running, goddammit, and I have new shoes, and I don't have to work tomorrow, so fuck yes. All right, anyway. First thing I ran across was, of course, a bunch of feminist statists whining about how women only make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes. Oh my god. We've only illustrated everything wrong with this false statistic so many fucking times. Right? You know, it's right up there with one in four, co one, one in four women on college campuses gets raped. So, of course, that's why women are trying so hard to get into colleges, because that's a place where they can go and get raped. That's why they want to go there so much. And the whiny little article discusses, of course, the fact that women tend to work for nonprofits and that women go into fields that pay less and all this other stuff. But then yada, yada, yada. And it was about this something, something... This is the Harvard Crimson. So apparently this is the Harvard newspaper or website or some shit. I don't really know and I don't really give a fuck. What is this shit? I didn't scroll down this far. Mental health and sexual assault. Harvard seniors who identify as homosexual, bisexual, questioning, or other... How many fucking options can there be if you're not homosexual, bisexual, heterosexual, or you don't fucking know? What else can there be? We're twi nearly twice as likely than heterosexual seniors to report having sought mental health support. And I'm sure that's the fault of heterosexual white men who work for a living. I have absolutely no doubt about that. It's this fucking sh just pure shit. Oh, God, 21% of them are virgins. 12% have had 10 or more sexual partners. 48% of males watched porn multiple times a week. Oh, God, 59% of females have never watched porn at Harvard. Okay, so 59% of the women who graduated from Harvard this year are liars. Guess what? The other... Oh, the rest of them are also liars. Oh, the other 41% are also liars. 81% of... Wait, wait, where'd it go? 81% of... I don't know what a final club is, and fraternity members drink two or more something two or more times a week. 60% of female sorority members drink two or more times a week. Oh my God, future of America. Academics and cheating. 
17% admitted to cheating in academics at Harvard. 5% have gone before the ad board for a disciplinary issue at Harvard. Oh God, and then of course here's the diversity shit. So anyway, let me, let me stop fucking with all that. It has nothing to do with what I was gonna talk about. Here's the important part. You know, so wham, 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 women make 77 cents, fuck you. All right, there's a reason why you make 77 cents. It's because you deserve to make 77 cents. It's because you're not very bright. This is a survey where they ask people the question, how much money are you going to make after you graduate? And then the people answer the question about how much money they're going to make after they graduate. And here's what it says over here. A, we're talking about people going into the technology field, blah, blah, blah. A plurality of women entering the technology or engineering sectors reported that they will make between 50000 and $69,999. Not seventy thousand, but sixty-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. While a plurality of their male counterparts said they will make between ninety thousand and one hundred nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. And this is the evidence that's presented for women make less money than men. Now this is why women should make less money than men. This is not an actual salary survey. This is some fuckwad at the Harvard Crimson doing a poll, a survey of randomly selected people, specifically selected people, people who self-select to participate? I don't know. This is some idiot from the Harvard Crimson asking other people, how much money are you going to make after you graduate? How in the fuck can anybody possibly know how much money they're going to make in the future? How do you know that? Okay, now, if you actually have a job and you have a contract for the job and the contract specifies how much money you're going to make, okay, but you still don't know that. You could die tomorrow. You could get Alzheimer's disease. You could have a stroke. You could get fired. Nobody knows how much money they're really going to make. Furthermore, in this survey, when these people said how much money they're going to make now that they've graduated, but we're required to present no evidence of payment, of employment, of anything else. Damn, I just forgot what I was going to say. I hate when that fucking happens. <laughs> okay, oh, so... How, do they, how does the person doing this survey know the information being presented is true? They just walk up to people, okay, you just graduated from Harvard. How much money are you going to make next year? Well, okay, first of all, boys being boys are going to exaggerate knowingly or unknowingly because, of course, they've all been brainwashed and they've been told that the economy is great thanks to Obama and they're all going to get high paying jobs. So the guys are all going to be like, oh yeah, man, dude, I'm going to make $100,000, man. Fuck yeah, dude. I got my degree in underwater basket weaving engineering and then I got my my minor in business accounting. You know, and they think, yeah, man, I'm going to make $100,000. I'm so fucking cool. Yo, dude, I'm a bro. I was in the frat and yeah, man, I drink all the time and I get drunk and yeah, I'm going to make a lot of money. The women, of course, are going to undervalue because women don't understand money, numbers, 
finance, value, worth, anything like that. That's why women will pay $120 for a purse, which is two square feet of cheap fabric that was sewn by some slave worker in China. And it was like $2 worth of fabric and $3 worth of labor. So the whole purse costs $5. Transporting it from China to the United States costs another $5. So there's $10 worth of value and women will pay $120 for that because women don't grasp numbers. And so the women are gonna go, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna make. I guess I'm gonna make uh, 50,000 a year. Yeah, because, you know, because patriarchy, because I can't possibly make as much as a man because we women only make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes. And one out of four of us on college campuses all got raped. And yet we came here and we paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to come to this campus. And I went in debt and I don't really understand how college loans work because I don't really understand that, that I have to pay those loans back. And I don't really, really understand interest rates. And so that's why I majored in in nonprofit organizations business management because you know I'll never make a lot of money in that and but I don't really have to worry about it because I don't really understand how money and numbers works so I'm just gonna marry a rich guy and then divorce him and get half of all of his money because patriarchy this is a fucking opinion poll of what Harvard graduates think they're going to make in the future as far as income. There is absolutely zero fucking actual data. It is a voluntary opinion poll where none of the information has been validated in any fucking way whatsoever. And this, if you're a feminist statist, or just a statist, or if you just don't understand how statistics work, this is considered evidence of how women make less money. Next on the agenda. Wait, is there anything here I need to talk about? Yeah, yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, so then, so that was from the, the Harvard Crimson website. From the article, that, which was of course written by a woman, you, naturally, the article written by a woman about this you know, whining about the 77 cents and everything. She closes this off by saying, quote, I have never hired an engineer, but many of our readers have. I would absolutely love to know what could possibly account for such a large pay gap between men and women just coming out of school. If you have any ideas, won't you please tell us in the comments, unquote. Well, yeah, the reason people are going to pay more money to a man coming out of school than a woman coming out of school is number one, the man is not going to get pregnant and need to take nine months off. Number two, the man did not major in softball bullshit. Even if they both have an engineering degree, the man probably didn't minor in underwater basket weaving or hyphenated studies or journalism or some shit. Number three, the man has math skills. And number four, the man is a lot less likely to whine and complain about discrimination, about sexism, about expecting people not to have pictures of girls in bikinis in the workplace, and all this other shit. Men don't fucking sue people because of their goddamn feelings. Hiring a man makes a lot more sense than hiring women, because for every woman you hire, it's a fucking sexual harassment lawsuit waiting to happen. Men just come to work and do what the fuck they're supposed to do. As I've explained before, men look at the work environment as a place where you go to make money so that you can leave work and do things with your friends. Women look at the work environment as a place where you go to hang out with your friends 
And anybody in the work environment who does not want to be your friend and doesn't conform to what you want, well, that person is guilty of sexual harassment. And you will then bring lawsuits against the company and against your coworkers for discrimination. You know, it, so long as you're not busy getting pregnant and taking seven months off to have a baby and whining about how you need a raise because you work so hard even though you haven't actually been to work in seven fucking months. So that's why men are more valuable employees. And, of course, the final reason that women are less valuable than men is because women have to have everything I just explained explained to them. They can't figure this out. Next on the agenda. Wow, only six comments. Nice! Somebody pointed out that women are twice as likely to choose public service or not-for-profits which don't pay as well, but of course, you know. But the Crimson survey suggests that not all can be attributed to career choice. Well, yeah, it can. See, oh, I did not read the comments before doing this podcast. So the next commenter says, this is just based on what graduate, what the graduated predicted they would be earning. Would it not be more useful to do a study of what a graduate class earns over time instead? Why, yes, this person's absolutely right. But of course, Kimberly, the feminazi who wrote this article, of course, jumps in. Oh, she says, the Crimson story is a bit unclear, but I believe this is based on actual job offers. So you see, she believes it's based on actual job offers because it shows that women make less money than men. And since that's what she wants to believe, she believes that this must be true because it already supports the conclusion, conclusions she wants to reach. Yet again, this is why women make less money than men. Because women go, all right, I have a conclusion. I've already reached my conclusion. Now I will look at only evidence evidence that supports my conclusion and any evidence that doesn't support my conclusion, I will ignore. Ooh, welcome to the world of global warming. I, I may, may have to leave a comment on this and just sort of bitch slap this stupid honey. I can't believe there's only six comments on this. This website must not get very many visits. inc.com, inc.com is where this is posted at. And yeah, I don't know. Next up, Poudre Valley Hospital, the hospital here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, Colorado, place where I used to work many years ago. They are... Sorry, that's me getting distracted. All right. They are on communityfunded.com, the local hospital which charges people thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, which receives money from the governments, which receives all this money from the insurance corporations, thanks to Obamacare that you had to buy health insurance. The hospital where I used to work that charges thousands of dollars is on community funded trying to raise $25,000 to make a garden outside the hospital. Can this get, can the fucking cyber begging get any more ridiculous? This is like Apple Computer starting a community-funded drive to raise money to buy a fucking coffee pot and a microwave for the break room. Send me bitcoins. If you send me bitcoins, I can spend less time working for a living and more time podcasting. And then podcasts wouldn't come out late like they're doing today. 
a hospital. And this is not, for those of you who don't know anything about Fort Collins, and, and that's fine, I mean, you're not supposed to know anything about Fort Collins, Colorado. Poudre Valley Hospital, Google it, Poudre Valley Hospital, Fort Collins, Colorado. They have, I'm not even sure, one, two, three, four campuses that I can think of right offhand. This is a huge healthcare system. They have, in the last 10 years, built built a whole new giant hospital. The original hospital, that was an old building where I worked, they have built extensions three, four stories tall. I mean, the fucking Poudre Valley healthcare system is fucking hemorrhaging money. Because, of course, it's a hospital, and thanks to laws and how you can't compete and uh, Obamacare and health insurance, I've, you know, we've, I've talked about how health insurance drives up the cost of health care, blah, blah, blah. Because of all this stuff, this hospital is making a ton of fucking money. This is not like some little dinky hospital in a small town that is struggling to survive. Poudre Valley Hospital has shit tons of money. They have a fucking helicopter. They have a fleet of ambulances. I don't know exactly how many ambulances we have here in Fort Collins, but when I say fleet, to me, fleet means they have more than five. I can guarantee you. I don't know how many more than five. I 100% guarantee fucking to you. I know this only because I've seen five of them in one place at one time. They have at least five ambulances. They have a helicopter. They have a fucking... What's the politically correct word for nut house? They have a place where you put crazy people. They have two giant, huge main campuses. They have at least one other smaller campus I know of. And they're on community funded, trying to cyber beg $25,000 to make a fucking garden. Give me Bitcoin, goddammit. Give me Bitcoin. Go to the website, cynlibsoc.com. Donate your Bitcoin. I will build a fucking garden in my backyard if you give me enough Bitcoin. All right, now I'm still here. No, I'm still here. So that was me playing on Twitter. Sorry. So there's a, there's a hashtag that apparently has become popular lately. Hashtag yes all women was apparently started by some feminazis to hate men because that's what feminazis do. And I only noticed this because a number of the anarcho-capitalist slash manosphere type bloggers in my Twitter feed are just abusing the shit out of it. So I will be joining them soon. This podcast will, in fact, go out on Twitter with the hashtag YesAllWomen because it will say something to the effect of hashtag YesAllWomen who are not ANCAPs should make less money than men. That is how it's going to be titled. Okay, ragging on women. By the way, I bet the community-funded garden at Poudre Valley Hospital idea, I bet that originated with a woman. Because only a woman would say, hey, we work for a multi-million, I don't know if they're billion-dollar level, but we work at a multi-million-dollar hospital, and we want to build a garden. Let's go on the internet and cyber-beg for money. See, only a woman would come up with that idea. A man would just be like, eh, why don't we just fucking take some money from some other department and just build a fucking garden with it? If every department fucking coughs up $1,000, we'll have $25,000. We can build a fucking garden. Nobody will notice $1,000 gone from their budget. Oh, that's right, because men can do math. All right, now, this next thing I saw on the Facebook, all this came from the Facebook. Oh, the fucking Facebook. God, I hate Facebook. Fuck. 
All this came from the Facebook. This is some piece of shit on Elite Daily, whatever the fuck that is. When I read the title, you'll already know how bad this is going to be. The actual difference between women who are hot and women who are beautiful. This is what's called pathetic. Let me read this to you and throw in some commentary. Women, we're curvy, skinny, hood. I don't know what hood even means. Pretty, cute, ethnic, bad, dime pieces, unicorns, babes, pieces of tail, juicy, fine, sexy, foxes, sultry, voluptuous, the list goes on. When was the last time you heard a man describe a woman with an adjective that isn't dripping in sexual innuendos and defaming premises? Oh my goodness. Oh, those men. When's the last time you've heard a woman describe a man as anything other than a pedophile, a rapist, or a misogynist? Ask yourself that. And then, consider yourself lucky that we men still allow you women to fucking live considering the excessive amounts of whining that you do. When was the last time you heard a man describe a woman by something that compliments her soul and her inherent elegance? Well, I, apparently you haven't noticed this, but women don't really have souls, and the word elegance does not fit really very many of the women I know. I mean, all you're doing is running around screeching about how men are misogynist and patriarchy and rape culture, and you're writing on how you only make 77 cents, and you're fucking accusing pickup artists of murdering people, and all this other shit, and you want to know why nobody describes your 240-pound body that spews, like, like the red-headed bitch, yeah. In the what's well in the YouTube video that was famous there, you know, fuck you, fuck you, and you want to know why women do not get described as elegant? Well, it's because most of you, not all, but most of you women out there, are not elegant. You're not. When was the last time you heard a man describe a woman as beautiful? Also, let's think about. It. Speaking of beautiful, there's a, right outside the window here, there's a college girl in a bikini. I'd say she's beautiful. You know why she's beautiful? Because she's far enough away that I can see her, but she's not close enough that I can see details in order to see any of the small flaws, coupled with the fact that I'm out of range of her voice. Oh, that was so sexist, wasn't it? Oh my God, that was sexist. When's the last time you ever heard a woman describe a man as beautiful? Oh, never. When's the last time you've heard a woman describe a man as anything other than a meal ticket? Somebody who should shut the fuck up and pay taxes. Somebody who should shut the fuck up and pay child support. Somebody who should shut the fuck up and pay alimony. Somebody who should shut the fuck up and go to war and die. When's the last time you've ever heard a woman refer to a man as anything other than a tool for her benefit. And notice how all of this is kicking off. You know, oh, why do men describe women as this? Why aren't men describing women as that? Well, I don't know. Why can't women be emotionally mature enough to not constantly need validation from men all the fucking time? I mean, no woman has described me as beautiful lately. And somehow or another, I'm not psychically scarred by this. Somehow or another, I manage to go on with life. Get out of bed, I go trail running, go ride my bike, I do my podcast, I go work at the theater, I flirt with girls, I have a beer, I make dinner, I clean the house. Okay, I haven't cleaned the house in a while. I have done the dishes. But yeah, the fucking living room is a goddamn disaster. And of course, the recording studio here. This place looks like a fucking tornado came through here and just dropped dead bodies everywhere. Dead bodies covered in paperwork because there's all this fucking paper. Anyway, nobody describes me as beautiful. And yet somehow or another, I managed to make it through life. Okay.
because I don't need validation every fucking waking moment. I continue reading. There's been a loss of respect when it comes to admiring women. Yes, when it comes to admiring women, because we women should be admired. You see, we women sit around and screech about the patriarchy. We have sex with men we're not married to. We get pregnant by men we're not married to, but expect the man we're married to to pay for the child. Then we divorce that man, and he still has to pay child support anyway while we're off fucking other people while neglecting a child that he thinks is his but isn't even really his. Yes, oh my goodness, there's been such a loss of respect. And we're covered in tattoos, and we're covered in piercings, and women cut their fucking hair off, and women are fat and women have hair on their upper lips but oh my goodness there's a loss of respect can you envision a 26 year old fat guy who is a virgin and has pimples all over his face and weighs 300 pounds sitting around whining about how women just don't respect him no, he'd be a loser, but even a loser of that magnitude understands, because he has a penis, somewhere under all the fat, he's got a penis, he understands that it's not up to women to respect him unless he fucking earns their respect. This is another reason why women make less money than men. Women believe you get respect just for showing up. Men understand respect has to be earned. There's been a loss of respect when it comes to ad admiring women. It's not even, she didn't even write, there's a loss of respect for women. No. She writes, there's been a loss of respect when it comes to admiring women. Because you see, women should be admired. Yes. Oh, yes. You have no morals, you're sluts, you're whores, you can't do math. You go into debt to pay a bunch of money to go to a cluster of buildings where you have a one in four chance of getting raped, or at least that's what you think. You're covered in tattoos and piercings and you cut your fucking hair off, except for the hair on your upper lip, which you don't cut off. And you expect to be admired. There's been a loss of respect when it comes to admiring women, shifting towards describing us as objects rather than people. It's because you behave like objects. You can't think rationally. You can't behave rationally. You, you behave like objects. You get treated like objects. Men look at women as pieces of tail, things to be conquered rather than appreciating women for their individuality. Men, when was the last time the women around you stopped and appreciated you for your individuality? When do, when, when do women appreciate men? Okay, when the jar needs to be opened, when a heavy object needs to be picked up, when the lawn needs to be mowed, or when the child support payments are due. Other than that, when any man out there when the fuck have women appreciated you? Hold on a second. I'm going to appreciate. Whoa, that was me hitting the microphone. Okay, I'm back. That was me appreciating the college girls in the bikinis outside the window. I was admiring them. They're very beautiful. Some of you out there may think I'm making that up and they're, they're really are not college girls outside my window in bikinis. You may think I'm making that up just to be funny. I promise you I'm not. It's still funny. 
but I'm not making it up. Now, I did this as an anarchy moment because we I didn't want to wake Randy up and she's doing some other shit right now. She's here, but she's doing some other shit. I didn't want to do a full stating the obvious and here we are at 35 minutes. I wonder if I can keep this down, this longest anarchy moment ever. Anyway, has nothing to do with bitching about girls. Which, by the way, I still love girls. Girls are cute and they smell good. It's just that 99% of them are really fucking dumb. And they write shit like this on the internet and other girls read it. They post it on Facebook. And then I see it and it's like, I'm thinking, okay, this was reposted on Facebook by a friend of mine who got pregnant at like 20 years old, had a baby, and then got divorced from the guy and is now a single mother. Brilliant. Great move. Yes. Fantastic. Anyway, a large portion of today's men are momentarily allured by hair extensions, large chest, big bottoms, and stilettos. They think sexuality comes in the form of bronzed skin, bikini waxes, and fake eyelashes. They've been programmed to believe that any woman with a sculpted body and perky breast is attractive. All right, first of all, okay, well, she does say a large portion of today's men. She didn't say all men, so I can't rag on her for that. That's what I was about to do. I was about to say I don't like hair extensions and I don't like big tits and I sure as hell don't like fake eyelashes but she didn't say the author of this article whoever it is I don't know and I don't give a fuck but I'm giving credit where credit's due she did not say all men she said a large portion of today's men can't really disagree with that too much and she mentions that they have been programmed to believe this yes yes they have and who have they been programmed by? Hmm. Well, all of these men who believe this, they've all had a mother. All their mothers were women. All of these men went to public school. In public school, virtually every teacher they had was a woman. They all watched television. The media industry, and especially the movie Hollywood industry, is controlled by liberals. And of course, the Lord and Savior, Hussein Obama, is president. So they have been programmed to believe these things. Hmm, how the hell did that happen? What about the women who don't want to indulge in the male fantasy? Yes, because, you know, so many women, I, I know all the women I see, they're thin and they have bronzed skin and big giant tits. Actually, no, most of the women I see are really fucking unattractive. Even the young college girls who think they're hot, most of them are really not very attractive. Not even in the fake attractive way, too, because there's, there's attractive, like what I personally am attracted to, and then there's the fake attractive, like what she's talking about, you know, the big fake tits and the, the what do you call it, a tan out of a spray can and the fake eyelashes and fucking plastering on makeup and tattoos and all this other shit, all of which I find disgusting. But yeah, that, that's the sort of, that's the fake attractive that she's talking about. I mean, even most of the, women I see who are trying to be that kind of fake attractive, even they are not attractive, not even the kind of fake attractive, much less real attractive. So most women are not indulging in this male fantasy. I have news for you. Very few women, or maybe they think they're indulging in it and they're just doing it very poorly. Well, what about the women who want to indulge, who don't, don't want to indulge in the male fantasy? What about the women who just want to wear comfortable sweaters and flats? What about the women who don't dress to impress the opposite sex, but instead to just feel good in their own skin? Women always say that shit about, I'm not doing it for other people. Yeah, you are. Yes, you fucking are. Okay? Everybody is. As I have said before, the only reason I wear clothes is for girls. The only reason I shave is for girls. The only reason I take a shower more than three times a week is for girls. This whole thing, I do this, I only do it for myself. Oh, shut the fuck. That's right up there with, whenever some motherfucker tells you, well, I'm not doing this for other people, I'm doing it for myself. 
Anytime someone tells you that shit, that's exactly like the people who say, oh, I'm not in it for the money. No. Oh, of course you're in it for the money. If you have to tell people you're not doing it for the money, it's because you're doing it for the money. Right? It's just like when I say I do this podcast for myself and I don't give a fuck if anybody else listens or not. Of course, that's a lie. All of you should fucking listen. There should be a fucking law that forces you to listen to my podcast. Anyway, what about the women? They just want to feel good in their own skin. Isn't there attractiveness in that? Isn't there an appeal to that sense of confidence? Yes, she's actually right. There is. The problem is you women don't have that sense of confidence because you constantly go through life looking for validation. This entire article is about how women are not being properly validated by men. Men are calling them babe and fox and honey instead of calling them beautiful. Men are not properly validating women the way women want to be validated. That's the point of the entire fucking blog post. Very few women have this confidence that she's talking about. Truly, one out of a hundred. One out of 100 women have this level of confidence. The other 99 wake up in the morning. The first thing they do is wait for somebody else to tell them what to do because they're statist. And the second thing they do is wait for somebody to validate them so they can feel good about themselves because they have no fucking ego. When did women become forced to acquiesce to this standard or otherwise get lost in the crowd? When did getting a man mean painting layers of makeup and painting on layers of makeup and investing in mini skirts? First of all, honey, nobody is forcing you to do. Nobody is holding you down, putting makeup on you and putting you in a mini skirt. Nobody is forcing you. Not the way. Oh, I don't know that people are. Nice. Sorry, I was looking at the Twitter feed. <laughs> It's, wait, hold on. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a Matt Forney's picture where somebody drew a penis and a ball sack on it and as it's shooting purple cum on Matt Forney's face. <laughs> oh, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> oh, sometimes I agree with Matt Forney. Sometimes I don't. He's, he's... If Matt Forney would give up his need for the government and for Republicans, he might be able to turn one day into an ANCAP, but I know he hates libertarians, just based on stuff he's written. So I have my disagreements with him. Anyway, back to the bimbo. There is a certain type of man that continually defames women. Right. Not just sometimes, but continually defames women. Judging them solely on sex appeal, failing to see the actual grandeur of women. You see, women have grandeur. You know, when they're ignoring their children by sending their children to daycare and plopping them down in front of the TV and creating the future serial killers of America. See, that's grandeur. When a woman is having a threesome with two other men who are not her husband and getting pregnant and then having her husband raise this other man's baby, see, that's grandeur. When women are painting themselves up like whores and getting titty jobs and cutting their hair off and growing mustaches. See, that's grandeur. Oh, they're so grand. They're so grandeur. These men don't, these are the men who don't understand the concept of natural beauty and uniqueness in flaws. Natural beauty and uniqueness in flaws. 
which is a code phrase the feminist statists use for being fat and ugly and having hair on your upper lip. No, you're right. Men do not recognize women who are fat and ugly and have hairy upper lips as being attractive. You're absolutely right. Just like women don't recognize fat men who live in their mother's basements as being attractive. Women recognize men who have money, muscles, and a motorcycle as being attractive. Men recognize women who are thin, have a nice figure, and don't have hairy upper lips and have long hair as being attractive. Yes, welcome to reality that you cannot accept, which is another reason why women make less money. Because you're not simply willing to fucking accept the reality of the world around you. They don't recognize that hotness doesn't last past midnight when the makeup has smudged onto the pillow and the hair extensions have been taken out. It doesn't last when the spray tans have been washed away and the tight dresses come off. Oh God, it's not real. It's an illusion that's been forcing women to conform to unhealthy habits for too many years. Again, nobody is forcing women to use too much makeup Nobody is forcing you to get a boob job. Nobody is forcing you to get hair extensions, which are incredibly expensive. I love when single mothers get hair extensions. You know, nobody is forcing you fucking stupid whores to do all of this. You're doing this because you can't stop seeking validation from men. And that's why you make less money than men make. Because you can't just do a fucking job or accomplish something. You go through life constantly needing validation. You are constantly incomplete. It's time these men are reminded of the difference between hot and beautiful. It's time men realize that women have more to offer than just a body. Really? Well, obviously they don't have too many critical thinking skills to offer based on the fact that they believe women make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes, based on the fact that they believe all the shit in this article, based on the fact that they keep trying to go to college even though they have a one in four chance of getting raped according to their own false statistics, and even though every psycho killer gunman who's walked into a school or other public place and shot a bunch of people, even though every one of those people was raised by a woman, They want to offer the illusion that women have more to offer than a body. 99 out of 100 women do not have anything more to offer than a body. And of those 99, 97 of them are fat and ugly and hairy in all the wrong places. Women are stunning creatures. See, they have grandeur and they are stunning. Women are stunning. Yes, the mothers of all the psycho killers, they're just stunning. All the women who have sex with men they're not married to and then have their husband raise a child that belongs to another man, they're so stunning. All the women who have cheated on their husbands, they're stunning. They're stunning. Oh, they're so stunning. But see, we're supposed to overlook all of this because, of course, all those things are the fault of the man. She would not have cheated on her husband if he wasn't so boring. She would not have cheated on her husband if he was not such a jerk. If only he would have recognized how majestic and stunning she is, she would not have had to cheat on him and have sex with another man. She was forced to have sex with men she's not married to because her husband just did not recognize how stunning and majestic she is. Yes, those rolls of fat and that the hair on her upper lip and the, the shaved head, the tattoos, Oh, she's so majestic. 
She's so stunning. And she's so intelligent with her degree in journalism and her minor in ethnic studies. Oh. Oh, if only, if only men just weren't so stupid and misogynist. If only they could recognize how stunning and majestic she is. Oh. Oh, if only. <sighs> the constant need for validation is just sickening. Women are stunning creatures with assets and traits both unique and enchanting to each one of us. And it's time we started showcasing our individuality and stop giving in to the illusion of sexy created by men. Right, we don't want to be attractive to men. We want men to think we're attractive the way we are, but we don't want to do anything to be attractive to men. Because it's all about us. Because women should never have to change to make men happy. But men should change to make women happy. Because beauty isn't about wanting to fuck her. It's about wanting to be with her. And I always love when women are... Women have... The, this, this is so bizarre. It's that women want to hang out with men and have relationships with men who don't want to fuck them. I don't even understand that. I mean, there are lots of women that I really like and want to be with. And I want to fuck every one of them. If I don't want to fuck you, unless you're like a legit friend, why would I want to be around you? So women want romance, and they want romance with men, but they want romance with men who don't want to have sex with them. And, you know, nobody understands the female brain, including females. But the whole idea of wanting to have a romantic relationship with somebody who doesn't want to have sex with you is just the most bizarre shit that I've ever heard in my life. We are now officially longer than a Stating the Obvious episode. This is the longest anarchy moment ever. Let me wrap this up. So it's, it's, it's about wanting to be with her. And then these are the little pieces of bullshit wisdom that she writes. Hot is admired from afar. Beauty is to be held. Well, isn't holding a woman so beauty should be held? Why, isn't that possessive? I had a girlfriend once who was like, you can't call me, I would refer to her as you're my girl. She'd say, you can't call me that. I'm like, why not? That's possessive. I'm like, you are a fucking stupid bitch. Shut up. I didn't tell her that. This is when I was younger and dumber. I should have. Now, if I called a girl, if I said to a girl, hey, what's up, baby? You're my girl or whatever. And she's like, that's possessive. I would tell her, get the fuck out. Get your shit. Get the fuck out. If we were in the, I'd stop the car. Get the fuck out. Hot is perception. Beauty is appreciation. No, beauty is what you're seeking. Beauty is validation. Because that's what women want. Validation. Hot is smoky-eyed. Beauty is bare-faced. Well, not if you have a bunch of pimples and shit. I can't really disagree with that, because smoky-eyed is hot. Beauty is bare face because I don't like a lot of women. I can't, I, I really honestly can't disagree with that one too much. Hot is an appearance. Beautiful is more than skin deep. No, no it's not. Beautiful start, stops and starts at the skin. Fat women are not beautiful. I don't give a fuck how great your personality is. If you're 300 fucking pounds and you have a mustache, you are not beautiful. Fucking deal with it. You can't deal with it. You're a fucking woman. Never mind. Hot is the way she moans. Beautiful is the way she speaks. Can't really disagree with that one either. Hot is a strong appeal. 
beautiful is a strong mind. Uh, I'm not really sure how you use the use the phrase strong mind when talking about women because if women had strong minds they'd be able to do math and if they could do math they would understand that women don't make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes hot is youthful beautiful is ageless no no old women are not beautiful old fat women with hairy upper lips and tattoos and piercings are not beautiful Hot is conventional. Beauty is unique. Eh, I kind of give you that one. Hot is a one-night stand. Beautiful is sleepless nights. Whatever. Hot is a state of being. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The beauty can be in the eye of beholder all you want. Fat women with mustaches and tattoos are still not beautiful. They're not. You can try to rephrase it in your desperate attempt to get validation as much as you want. Fat women are still not beautiful. Hot is devious. Beautiful is innocent. Oh yeah, you women are so fucking innocent. You know, when you're fucking men who aren't your husbands, when you're cheating on your boyfriends, when you're sending your child off to daycare so you can have sex with random men, when you're plopping your kid down in front of the TV, when you're, you know, teaching public school and treating children like shit. Yeah, yeah, you're so fucking innocent. Shut up, whore. Hot is bending over. Beautiful is baking her blueberry pancakes. Hot is bending over. I'm okay with that. Beautiful is baking her blueberry pancakes. You mean beautiful is the man baking blueberry pancakes for her? Or do you mean beautiful is baking her blueberry pancakes? Like she's baking her blueberry pancakes. Like it's her blueberry pancake recipe. And do you bake pancakes? I mean, I suppose you could. Well, you know, correct use of the English language. That's part of the patriarchy. It's like math. We can't expect women to know how to fucking write or do addition or anything because that's patriarchy. Hot is sultry. Beautiful is wholesome. Eh, I can live with that. Hot is her curves. Beauty is her nerves. No, beauty is the ability to shut the fuck up and stop complaining once in a while. Beauty is the ability to be able to go for 15 fucking minutes without needing to be validated by every man on the planet Earth and told how fucking wonderful and perfect you are. Hot is a text message. Beautiful is a love letter. Mm, yeah, I, I might be able to roll with that one. That's, that's not bad, actually. Hot is a facade, beautiful is a woman. Again, the desperate attempt to put out the idea, put out into the universe, the idea that all women are beautiful. Well, they're not. They're not. All women are not beautiful. Some women are beautiful. Not all of them. Your inability to distinguish that is why... You should make less money than a man.